can't wait till I have something wood to beat on. That just doesn't sound right. I want to welcome everybody to the Taft City Council Successor Agency Joint Regularly Scheduled Meeting for Tuesday, October the 15th here at the Taft Old Dorado Room. As a service to all, if you would, please silence your phones or put them on vibrate so they don't, uh, don't get us away from what we're doing. Any writings or documents provided to a majority of the city council regarding any item on this agenda are made available for public inspection in the lobby of the Taft Transit Center right here for about another 30 days or so at 550 Supply Road, Taft, California during normal business hours brought to you by Senate Bill 343. We're going to begin this evening's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to have our city clerk, newly elected president of Kiwanis, <laughs> lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Followed by the invocation from Scott Pearson. So, keep your hand over your heart, salute, and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's great. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for uh, this country that we live in so many uh, great freedoms that we enjoy here. Uh, and we enjoy them in Taft as well. Uh, and uh, we thank you that we are a long ways from uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, some of the things that go on there. God, you are still sovereign over this world, whether it's, uh, whether it's here in Taft or it is somewhere else. And uh, the things that we do um, don't surprise you and uh, they don't knock you off your throne. Thank you for uh, the blessings of being in Taft. Give wisdom here to our city council members, to our city staff, and uh, to all of those um, who serve us in those ways. Thank you, God, for loving us, and we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, Madam Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Yes, Mayor Knorr. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cryer. Here. Council Member Bryant. Here. Council Member Eveland. Here. And Council Member Whiting. Here. Do I have a sign up sheet for public comments this evening? Thank you very much. Well, this is going to be easy. All of you young people who are here because of a government class, stand up, please. That's a request. That's not a look at the camera, please. I'm going to make you famous for just a moment. And you can remain standing. I'm going to ask you one simple question, a history question. If you get it right, you get to leave. If you get it wrong, then you're going to stay here for the entire meeting. OK, you guys ready? Who said early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise? Benjamin Franklin, you're out of here. The rest of you, sit down. <laughs> no, no, no. Well done. All right. Thanks for being here. This is your government. You're going you're gonna to come up with the solutions to the problems that we have not. I encourage you to be here, even if you're not here, for extra credit. Because after all, it is. It's your future. We're old guys. Well, he's not an old guy. <laughs> getting there. Most of us are old guys. It's your world. You're shaping your world. Be a part of it. All right, then. No citizens request public comments this evening. We're going to go right to council statements. Non-action. <clears throat> Councilman Evelyn. None tonight, Mayor. None this evening. All right. Councilman Bryant. I do have just one thing, Mr. Mayor. Yes, you sir. Indulge me. I'm going to read something, and I want you guys to all look and see. nod your head if you agree with this statement. The statement's penned by a prominent politician from right here in the state of California. And he often taught, he taught specifically, while I appreciate the value of this law, uh, I'm concerned about the continuing and seemingly inexorable transfer of authority from the parents to the state. Not every human problem deserves a law. In the last 14 days plus, the governor's pen, put his pen to paper and signed into law a part of a thousand changes or additions to the state of California's legal system. Unfortunately, he didn't take the advice of his predecessor, and I never thought in a million years I'd sit here and say, man, Jerry Brown was smart. But he wrote those words. Uh, he was wise enough to see <coughs> that, again, it's up to the local jurisdiction to have as much control as possible 
and to let the people who live in those jurisdictions govern at the local level because that's where government is best. And I learned that from George Washington. So here we are 200 plus years later and it still rings true. So that's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> By the way, for you young folks, raise your hand if you've ever read legislation that it's trying to become a law. Have you ever read it? Will they put you to sleep or what? <laughs> Can you imagine reading a thousand of those and understanding them before you actually put your pen to them? Do you think that anybody could do that in a year? I don't either. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Councilman Whitey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you all know, we prepped for a public safety, public power shutoff last week in the City of Taft takes us seriously and we prepare for these types of situations as best we can. But it's not enough. The city, for all of its resources, we can't save everybody. It's just not possible. Same goes for the county and the state. The people of this area need to be prepared to care for themselves without the assistance of the local, state, or federal government. Uh, and it's not just power outages. We're in an earthquake area, as we all know. We should already be prepared. The federal government says we need to have food and water and shelter and batteries, flashlights, you know the drill, uh, for up to three days, but I disagree with that. I believe we should be prepared for several months if possible, longer if you can. On a side note, the Mormons of Utah used to require their church members to have a year's supply of food and water, but even that's changed. Now they require two years. And lastly, we've become complacent about our safety and security. We take our freedoms for granted. Benjamin Franklin was once quoted as saying, those who give up their liberty for more security neither deserve liberty or security. We saw this exact thing in the Astrodome in New Orleans during the Hurricane Katrina event of 2005, and if you sought shelter at the Astrodome, the officials confiscated your weapons, took your extra food and water, and gave it to the needy. Some people were assaulted, street gangs ran wild, a National Guardsman was shot, all while housed at the Astrodome. How's that for safety and security in an emergency situation? The state of California has been stripping us of some of our liberties under the guise of security. If we lose the Second Amendment, the rest of them will fall too. This is why the Second Amendment was created to protect the rest of the Bill of Rights. As I was writing this earlier this week, um, our esteemed governor signed 15 more gun control bills. I don't know if you guys saw the news. Most of them, our former governor, Jerry Brown, refused to sign on his own. Now, if that isn't death by a thousand cuts of a, a constitutional right that we have, we, we have under the Bill of Rights, I don't know what is, but in closing, I'm asking all citizens of the West Side to be mindful of their God-given rights. Plan, prepare, arm yourself, and in the crisis, be able to feed, clothe, and protect yourselves and your family, regardless of whether the government is able to help you or not. You don't need to wait for the last minute. And with that, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a lot of things ha happened in the last couple of weeks in the last council meeting. The last one, we had a... Um, Okay, thank you. We had an issue with our prison, our federal prison. Uh, we found out that day that it was, it was closing. And uh, thanks to our mayor and our congressman, uh, they're going to keep it open now. How long, we don't know. But there's a lot of political games going on. You know, Nancy Pelosi and um, uh, Governor Newsom, they're related, they're family. And they hate our president. But that, that's not fine. They want to hate our president, fine. But why are they using it against us, we the people? Why are they trying to play pawns with us? And I think that with the uh, their, with our governor closing down our state prisons, as far as our, the private prisons closing them down, now with Pelosi in government, because Congress holds the purse to pay for all the prisons or anything to do with uh, spending money, that Congress has a purse for it. I feel my I, I might, might call me a, con, a conspiracy, but I don't care. But I just think there's a falling the dot and stuff. I just feel that. Um, they hate uh, our president so much that they're going to do anything to close things down, make it hard to affect us as a city. Along with, and we're, we're and we rely on our prisons and stuff here for economic de uh, development and, and things. We also have our oil industry here is getting clamping down more rules and regulations. And it's getting to the point that how can you make a living here? How can uh, how can you find a job not uh, worried that you may lose that at any time? 
It could be next month, next year, next winter, but there's no deadline. Don't, there's no, it's, it's a surprise. Nobody don't know what's going on. And I, 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 I'm proud to say that our mayor has been really up front as, as our city. We're out there and speaking, going to different uh, meetings, meeting the governor, meeting with our local representatives and, co and our congressman. He's doing a, really a good job, and I'm really proud of him, what you're doing. And I appreciate it. And, but he, we need more people to write letters, talk to our local um, representatives, and ones that are not our representatives, but in other areas, and tell them our concerns because they're hurting us. Price goes up. It's not only it, it, everybody's worried about the rich, one percent, but what else about us middle class, the other ninety percent that are paying for the price of fuel, paying for the price of uh, uh, products and stuff that fuel is uh, oil is made out of. And I feel that uh, we're we're being penalized because of the hatred that we have. You know, I didn't like uh, Obama, but you know what? He's my president. I support him. But I didn't go around bash him, uh, tell my legislator to impeach him or look at the crimes he did and give him the billions and billions of dollars to, um, to the moolahs there. Uh, by plane, there was no vote. I don't guarantee it didn't go before Congress about they're going to send money on airplanes over there to Iran. But, but it happened. But you don't see us jumping up and down to impeach him or crying, up, you know, crying and things. But I just think that we're, playing, we're being taken as pawns here. And uh, it's going to affect us. And... It, it, it does affect our city. It affects the state of California. Here, our president's trying to help with the, open the federal lands for oil industry. Then the state comes behind. Oh no, we can't do that. So they go ahead and close off the state. We'll close off the state land part, and uh, so we can't. You can't. So that trumps. No pun intended. Trump on on the federal part of it. But uh, it, it is sad uh, how we are affected by all this and our, our taxes that we receive, the cost. Uh, the morale in our in our country and in California, it's all changing to the negative. And uh, it's, instead of working together to make us right, I don't care which party, put, I don't care which person, uh, party that puts that to make the country better, I'll go for it. I don't care. I'm not going to say, well, because he's he's red, I ain't going to vote for him because I'm on the blue side. No, no, we're all together as one. We're, we're all uh, Americans here. We need to make what's right for ourselves and what's right for our country and uh, go forward. But I'm getting really sick and tired of what's happening, that we're dying. We're, we're, we're having to fight for our lives right now. And also through other areas, which our Councilman Ed Waddy had to say, and, and I agree with him. I totally agree with him. And, and they're all, all of us here on, on, a, on a council here, we all think the same, but it gets kind of frustrated. Your hands are kind of tied. You can talk so much and do so much. Uh, it, it does get frustrating because we pay for it. The laws come down. It takes money from our roads. It takes money from our uh, infrastructure. It just takes money from all, all of us so we can uh, try to get what money we get. But anyway, beyond that, the El Dorado kickoff party was, was really great. It was, it was tremendous how it went out there. Two great bands played. Um, the mayor was out and about. I, I saw him all over the place, shaking hands, talking to people. Uh, I enjoyed talking to all the people there. Uh, they, we had some, some food vendors out there. And, uh, it was a great kickoff, you know, and I'm looking really looking forward to next October uh, 19th. 19th. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. You know, it's gonna be a great kickoff, and in, in, in our next uh, programs that we do have. But that's all I have to say, Mayor. All right, thank you very much. Sir. I would have to agree. I was at the Old Dorado kickoff celebration, and it was a wonderful thing for everybody. Everybody I talked to had a grand time. Mm -hmm. The bands were outstanding. The food was delicious, and so much hard work went into that. So hats off to all the people that made that happen. Uh, Shannon Jones being one of them, Mary Cooper. I, if you, you got to be careful about naming names because so many people all came together to make that happen. It was a it was a wonderful event. So we're a year away, and it's going to be an exciting year. One of the things I want to talk about is in the news some months ago and weeks ago was a surface expression out in McKittrick, California. Surface expression was uh, oil and water bubbling up out of the ground in a fissure created by a uh, geological fault. But it made all the news and the news media descended upon McKittrick. I myself was interviewed by the LA Times, WQED, Channel 23, Channel 17, on and on and on. Everybody wanted to know about it. So many reporters showed up in McKittrick to see the massive, their adjective, not mine, oil spill. Uh, and what they had in common was their ignorance of the industry and the level of ignorance of the industry. But they were all there. They had to be the first ones to write that story, tell a story even if they didn't even know what they were talking about. They were there. Well, there was a unified command. There was uh, this 
the Bureau of uh, Spill Prevention and Recovery that was put together back when the Exxon Valdez spill happened long before some of you all's time. But anyway, they put this together so that in the event of another big spill in America, they could control it. And the Exxon Valdez was 260,000 barrels spilled in the ocean in southeastern Alaska that impacted about 11,000 square miles of ocean and 1,300 miles of coastline. That is a massive oil spill. In McKittrick, it was about 1.25 acres. It would fit inside your local Walmart superstore five times and not impact the produce section. It was not massive by anything, any means, any numbers. The amount of oil recovered during the entire course of that, of that uh, surface expression would feed California's thirst for oil uh, for almost seven minutes. Seven minutes. Not massive by anything. Anyway, it made all the news. Everybody was here. McKittry got to send it upon. Everybody had an opinion. Well, each week for 31 weeks, Unified Command sent out a report all about what was going on. We're talking about Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife. We're talking about San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District. We're talking about OES. Uh, we're talking about the uh, Department of Water. So they sent out this combined report once a week for 31 weeks. Monday, yesterday, was the VIP, they arranged for a VIP uh, tour of the completed cleanup. Now, would you think that all those people that were there to talk about uh, all of the things that they did, I will tell you as the mayor, I was asked this multiple times, aren't you concerned about the imminent threat to the health and safety of the people of the city of Taft? The imminent threat to the people, their health and welfare which I responded, I'm always concerned about the health and welfare of the people of the city of Taft. Absolutely. Well, none of those media people showed up because you know why? Because the professionals involved in that cleanup did an outstanding job. They cleaned that whole thing up. It looks as if it never had happened. Over 100,000 man hours worked under a great deal of pressure and oversight. Not so much as a first aid, not one, zero. Incident-free operation, IFO. When is the last time you went to a high school <coughs> football game and watched two hours of football and nobody got hurt? I can't say it's been huh? a long time in recent memory. There you go. Thank you very much. Two hours of football, somebody always gets hurt. Over 100,000 hours worked on this cleanup by professionals, not so much as a scratch. Media wasn't there to ask me how that happened. They didn't ask anybody. You know, many elected officials showed up for the VIP tour. Me. One. That's right. I was thoroughly disgusted. The vice president of Chevron was there. Uh, the people that supervised the cleanup, they were there. Dogger, what used to be Dogger, they were there. Department of Fish and Wildlife, they were there. The media was notably absent. You know why? Because good news is no news. Why waste their time? I was thoroughly disgusted by their absence. I just wanted to bring that forth to everybody that the professional company that they are and all the contractors they employed remediated that, cleaned it up, and it looks like it had never happened and everybody went home safe in spite of all the hype and the garbage that you heard or read related to the story. So they won't tell you, so I'm telling you. They did a great job and everybody's healthy. That's all I have in that regard this evening. So, Planning Commission report. Mr. Do we have Mayor, a Planning Commission report? Mr. Mayor, we have a late speaker that showed up for uh, public comments, if you can fit him in. Oh, indeed. He's at the rear of the room. Who would that late speaker be? Right there. All right. Well, come on up here, sir. We're going to slide you in. Okay. Mr. Thomas, please state your name for the record. Name is Michael Toms. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Uh, I wanted to uh, quickly uh, propose something uh, to the City Council that maybe we could look into as a viable solution to a couple problems we have here in the community. Um, with the recent PG&E power outage, 
Uh, I think it drove home to everybody that, uh, yes, one, we could be more prepared uh, for, for natural disasters, uh, emergency outages, things of that sort. But I wanted to ask the city if it has ever considered putting the city on what is called a microgrid. Um, to explain what that is, it is uh, a power grid that can generate its own power. So it would still be attached to the regular power grid, but in the event of an emergency, it can, uh, at the flip of a switch, it can be disconnected from the main grid and the city could generate its own power. Uh, other cities, um, other facilities have done it before um, where they disconnect from the main grid and they run off either generator power or um, renewable energy sources. Um, I brought it. I brought this idea to uh, Councilman Bryant, and he definitely said that this could maybe be something we establish a study session for, something we can explore further. Uh, I think it's now more important than ever, uh, considering that uh, one power company can now switch off the power of uh, almost a million people at its own whim, and uh, God knows what will happen. It's actually, in my opinion, a danger to people especially people who are having to survive on medical devices and equipment um, that they may not be able to charge, especially when we're only given 24 hours notice before they shut our power off. Uh, I understand that uh, funding, uh, if we were to look into it, funding might be an issue, uh, you know, given the city's finances. I don't know the details of that. Um, but... Um, an example, the city of Borrego Springs down south, uh, they have a microgrid themselves. They're a town of about 3,500 people. And a gem it's a mixture of generators, and uh, most of the buildings in town have solar power, or have solar panels. And they generate their own power in the case of, a in the case of an emergency. And they paid for it using a mixture of federal and state grants. And I know that starting 2017, the state of California gave out over $44 million worth of grants specifically for this. So it can help uh, in the case of emergencies by helping us generate our own power independent of the, of the main power grid. Uh, it can also help generate jobs for the community uh, given the state's attacks on the oil industry and also given the recent uh, threat of closure to the prison I think it's important to think about diversifying our economy more, and I think that doing that and establishing some different power sources can help bring jobs to this community. Um, also, it's solar power. It could also potentially generate revenue for the city. So um, let me know what you think of the, that proposal, and I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming before the city council. It's interesting you would say what you said. First off, we cannot take action on anything that is not on the agenda. Now, I should have read the citizens' request public comments preamble, which I did not. Uh, I'm going to throw that in. It's a little bit late too, but just for your information, uh, this was the time and place for the general public to address city council on matters within its jurisdiction. State law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. Council may receive comment and set the matter for a subsequent meeting. Please limit your comment to five meetings. So for all of you, especially you students, that would be the opportunity if you signed up on this to come before the council, much like Mr. Thomas did, and, and bring your thoughts and your concerns before your government body. We cannot take action on those things. We can set those matters uh, for an agenda item and discuss them further. So I thank you very much. I will tell you just briefly an observation that I did make. Most of the power interruptions were in the nine counties area. The nine counties area is up around San Francisco and that whole area. Uh, they are well known for their aversion to the oil and gas industry and anything that is carbon based. And they will tell you that they want to get rid of all things that are carbon based and just go to renewables. And they're OK with all of that. And yet the first time PG&E is going to shut down the power because they want to avoid large scale fires, which we were the victims of for the last couple of years. Uh, 
You know what happened to all those people up there with their commitments to going green and their aversion to oil and gas? They immediately ran to Lowe's and to Home Depot, purchased generators powered by internal combustion engines, bought cans and filled them with gas and diesel because they were more than willing to put their moral stance to the side as opposed to dealing with, you know, the, uh, the problem of not having electricity for a very short period of time. I thought that to be very interesting. So thanks for bringing that before the council and, and we will discuss that at a later date. Thank you all very much. Okay. Now then, Planning Commission report. Do we have Planning Commission report? Very good. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, Terry Livingston, Vice Chair of the Planning Commission. Um, it's also kind of a repeat of last uh, report. We worked on three items, all of them related to zoning code amendments, uh, amendments to the alcohol and beverage control section of the, the zoning code, amendments to the um, massage establishments ordinance and amendments to uh, the location and placement of um, antennas for uh, wireless communication. Um, probably hear about that a few more times before we're done. <laughs> um, so that was it, nothing uh, new for you, but continue to work on the city's business. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for doing the people's work. We appreciate that. Department reports for this evening. No department reports? All right. City manager's statement. City manager Jones. Thank you, Mayor. No statements. All right. City attorney statements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No statement. All right. Thanks, sir. Future agenda requests this evening, gentlemen. Mr. Mayor, I actually do have one. To kind of piggyback on uh, what Mr. Thomas had mentioned. I would like to ask, and I believe this is probably best starting at the committee level, the Public Safety and Public Works Committee could at least do a just a review of where we are at in terms of response to uh, public safety crises or power outages and whatnot, uh, and to include a feasibility study, or even at the very high level of establishing a microgrid or alternative power sources in the event uh, of an emergency and the potential for uh, I guess revenue generation and whatnot for the city. All right. Would anybody like to concur? I, I concur. All right. Very good then. We have direction. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Any others? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, I do. Um, future agenda requests would be, and this will be not in the short term future, but uh, as you all know, we have to uh, uh, comply with future recyclable needs uh, that California has laid the law down on. And we're also having a scavenging problem. So my thought would be uh, as a future agenda request that when we're looking at those items that we include a simplification, if you will, of the city ordinance revolving around scavenging to reflect that that property actually belongs to the city of Taft once it's been deposited in the receptacle. And that if you remove it from that receptacle, you've committed theft and that all those cans should be appropriately labeled to reflect that it would be a violation of the penal code to remove those items from our possession and that you could be cited or arrested for that violation. Um, and I think that, uh, and, and again, this is not in the, the close future, this will be in the, the far future as we grapple with the uh, recyclables uh, laws that are coming down the pike. I think what, 2021, Mr. Uh, City Manager? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I believe it is, yeah. So um, that's my request is that we look at that and see if we can simplify that, that ordinance so we can give some teeth to the police department to uh, actually stop a lot of the scavenging. All right. I would concur with that. I think that's something we're going to have to look at well before that lands in the people's laps because the state has set things up such that they are more than ready and willing to fine all municipalities up to $5,000 per day uh, anytime they find cross pollution in any of those things. So it's, it's going to be critical. Um, I would have to concur then. Thanks, Thank sir. you, Mr. Mayor. Any other? All right, then. Next up, consent calendar items 8 through 11. All items listed on the consent calendar shall be considered routine and will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the City Council requests specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Any item removed from the consent calendar will be considered after the regular business items. 
Are there any items on the consent calendar that any member of the public would like to comment on? Seeing none. Consent calendar items for this evening are item number eight, the minutes from the October 1st, 2019 regular meeting. Payment of bills, some $476,000 worth of bills. Item number 10, agreement with pavement management system development. The recommendation is a motion to execute an agreement with Pavement Engineering Incorporated in the amount of $48,735 for pavement condition index and pavement management software. And finally, item number 11, formation of a complete count committee for the 2020 census. Recommendation, there is a motion to form a 2020 census complete count committee for Taft and appoint planning director, Mark Staples, to lead the committee. Does any council member wish to remove any of these items from the consent calendar? Hearing none at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve consent calendar items 8 through 11. So mm -hmm. Second. I have, I have two motions and two seconds. <laughs> pick your poison. Everybody decides that you're talking. There you have it. I, I picked them. You got them? All right. I picked them. May we have a roll call, please? Mayor Pro Tem Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Council Member Evelyn? Yes. Council Member Whiting? Yes. And Mayor Knorr? Yes. And that passed on a 5 0 vote. Thank you very much. So. We've come to the end of the open session portion of our meeting this evening. I want to thank you all for attending, being a part of it. Now we're coming to the closed section. This evening we have two items on the closed session agenda. That would be a conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, government code section 54956.9B, one potential case, and item B, conference with real property negotiator Craig Jones, city manager, government code section 54956.8. APN number 032-110-30 and 032-1-110-70 and 71 and 031-040-17-00-8. Thank you all for being a part of this evening's meeting.